I have like no idea where to start with this. It's just like weird, I'm, like looking at myself on the camera on the screen. This is like worse than trying to give a lecture to a bunch of students. <laughs> where should I start? I made a video about spearfishing, you wanna see? Today we're headed to the west coast to do some spearfishing. Should be a good time, got about an hour and a half drive over to where we're planning to go. And uh, yeah, we got sunny skies in Hilo for once. Should be, uh, should be a good time. The drive over is always beautiful. When we leave Hilo, we drive up the mountain, up over Saddle Road, which is the highway that, that uh, goes from Hilo over towards uh, the west, west side of the island. It gets up to about 6,000 feet in elevation. So we go from sea level up to 6,000 feet. You see a very diverse range of environments as we go through those, those changes in elevation. And it's really pretty amazing. It's, it's nuts that, that we call this place home. What's up everyone? We made it to the spot we're gonna go try some spearing. Not too bad. The beach isn't too busy, there's not a whole lot of guests in the uh, resort, we're guessing. Um, so yeah, it's not too busy today. Looking forward to getting out there. On this hunt, I'm spearfishing with my good buddy Brian. He's already in the water getting things around. Beautiful location. See you after. So as soon as we get into the water, we start to see some fish. Um, and it's not anything massive. These, these fish on the uh, reefs that we, we tend to go for around here, smaller fish. Um, but there are some monsters that, that live out uh, along the reefs here in Hawaii. Um, there's definitely some, some better spear fishermen that you can check out. Uh, I'm really new to it. I grew up in Kansas and moved to Hawaii about a year ago. So basically learned how to spear fish uh, with some help from folks on YouTube. And it's been quite the journey. So I'm sharing some of these videos with you today just to kind of give you an idea of, of how we've been getting into spear fishing as well as hunting on the big island of Hawaii. One thing you'll notice is we, we can't hold our breath very long yet. My bottom time's around a minute at this point, and that's, that's on a good day. I figured out how to equalize with no problems. I still have plastic fins, so they're not as long and as efficient as, as some of the nice like carbon fiber cutter type fins that would get you down deep quickly with less effort. Um, so yeah, our bottom times are pretty short, but we still managed to, to find some fish. I found this really cool pass through. Uh, dove down, saw that there was some daylight coming uh, from the other side, and we, once we got down there, we checked it out and, and uh, saw that it, it would have been pretty easy to swim through. I'm a little bit chicken still, trying to get through some of these tight squeezes. I see some of these other guys swimming through some pretty big uh, pass-throughs in, in some of these other videos, but we'll get there. <laughs> So I took a drop here uh, with the idea that there was a lot of structure around. A lot of times fish like to hang out around structure. And I knew there was sort of this like, cave around the side that once I dove down to, maybe there'd be some, some fish hiding around the corner. Uh, a lot of times some nocturnal fish will hang out in the dark underneath caves and some of the holes. And so I, I took a drop hoping that there'd be something on the other side of that. I dove down, came around the the, uh, the crest of that ridge there. And once I got down deep, there just wasn't anything going on there, uh, which was kind of the case for, for a little while. But the dive is still worth it. It's always beautiful and you get to see some cool structure like that. None of these dives were more than 30 feet. Uh, the initial dives were even less than that, maybe around 20 feet. Uh, I think the average dive depth for that day was around 20 feet. So nothing too bad, which is pretty cool. It's just Right off the coast, you can get in the water and go get some fish. So here I took a drop. I had my gun out ahead of me when I should have had a better position. And uh, as I dove down, I got down and, and basically poked the rock with it. And it made a noise, it made a bunch of racket. And so fish don't like that. And you can see in this, this instance here, it didn't work out so well. And the, the goldfish I was after swam off. 
So at this point, we'd already been diving for quite a while, and you'll notice I haven't even shot the spear gun yet. Um, so it was time to, to try to get after some fish. So I ended up taking a drop after spotting some orange spined unicorn fish that we've targeted in the past. The Hawaiian name is Uma Uma Le. I'm really terrible with Hawaiian names, but I'm trying to get better. I took the drop, was able to get into position, hold it together, and then got an excellent shot. Ideally, we'd like to place the shot into the brain so it ends up killing the fish immediately. Uh, but obviously, this isn't always uh, what happens. And in this case, I didn't quite get the, the fish right in the brain, but I was able to get a, the, the fish under control. And then I used my dive knife um, to, to dispatch the fish as quickly as possible. On the way back to the buoy, I was able to swim over a really cool uh, sea turtle. So those are always fun guys to see when we're out there. We always dive with a buoy. The buoy has a dive flag on the top of it. And it's weighted so it keeps it upright. It's got a fish stringer on there, so that's where we keep our fish. Uh, pro tip, always put the, the fish stringer through the mouth and pass it out through the gills. That way you don't have to mess up your fish anymore. After this, I was feeling pretty, pretty good. Uh, these fish are excellent eating. We, of course, take these guys home and, and uh, use them for food. Uh, so I was feeling great, and I was looking forward to getting after some more fish. But you see, it's not as always as easy as you think it might be when you get into spear fishing or, or any other type of, of uh, hunting or gathering. The next couple of dives were uneventful, but as you can see, the terrain is just amazing. You get down into these crevasses um, where the coral just seems to rise up on both sides of you. It's amazing. It's really, really a great experience. Even if the species you're going after are not there, it's, it's really neat. I was feeling good after getting the first fish. Uh, so I dove down and was, was feeling pretty cocky at this point. I figured, well, if I shoot, I'm gonna get the fish. Well, it didn't work out so well. You see in this drop, I dove down, and got into position, waited, but I didn't quite wait long enough, and the fish was a little far away, and I missed my shot. I can hear in the background that the uh, shaft ends up hitting the rock, and we missed the fish, that was all she wrote. After that missed shot, I swam around for a while and just kind of observed the area and headed out away from shore uh, for a little bit, and got into some depths of around 30 feet, so still not super deep, but pushing my limit. My deepest dive is probably around 35 feet. Um, and so I was curious to see at this point if the terrain at these depths would hide some fish. Uh, the areas look like they might hold some fish species that, that we like to take. And so um, I observed from above. After doing my breathe up, I uh, dove down. Took a, I took a drop here got into about a little over 30 feet of water depth and waited and something came out of the depths. Unfortunately I wasn't quite able to to get some good footage of this particular fish. Um, if I was a better expert with uh, using Adobe Premiere Pro um, or After Effects I could probably zoom in and show you. You can barely see the uh, outline of the fish in, uh, when I zoom in using Premiere Pro. Uh, but I did miss this shot. I promise you it was on fish. Uh, and then that was, that was the end of that opportunity. Because of course all the fish scattered away. And I've been holding my breath so I need to recover. And at this point we were, we were pretty much done for the day. So I took a few more shots on a couple of fish and missed both of them. So that didn't go so well. We're pretty much tired at this point. After a few hours of diving, you get pretty tired uh, just because of the changes in pressure going uh, up and down. And, uh, it's, it wears you out quite a bit, especially if you're not used to it. So we were ready to go back in at this point and um, Brian, my dive buddy, noticed that our stringer full of fish, which had our, all three fish on there, uh, had gone missing. The stringer's gone. Oh, really? So we we started searching around for the, the stringer and Brian managed to come up with it. Luckily it wasn't very far from 
where the buoy was at. Got it. Got him? All right on. Good job, buddy. So we got the stringer fish back. We were stoked to at least have our three fish that we shot, and we headed into shore. Thank you so much for watching this video. It's my first time making a YouTube video. It's my first time editing using Adobe Premiere Pro. And I really appreciate any comments you can leave to improve my video making capabilities or video editing capabilities, um, as well as any comments you might, or questions you might have uh, regarding spearfishing. So we've got some footage from a recent dive in the same place I did just the other day where my other dive buddy and I managed to uh, get a octopus or taco as they're called here in Hawaii. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, if you if you like this video, hit the like button, smash that subscribe button so you can see when that that taco video comes out. And we'll look forward to uh, seeing you guys in the future. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.